Hi, this is Ed in San Diego, and today is a special day. Uh, we have three broadcasts. Um, first, coming up in just a couple of minutes from uh, Rotterdam in Netherlands, uh, Tenneke Rensen. Um, her company, PowerfulBusinessAcademy.com. Also, Maximum Business Growth for Women. Dot com. Finally, Powerful Business Women's Club. Dot com. She also has something called She Credit. So we'll be back in just a minute with more information, and you'll meet Tenneke Renson. Stay tuned. This is Ed in San Diego, and you're on Global TV Talk Show. And welcome again. Our very special guest today is in Rotterdam. Now, I've never been to Rotterdam. I've been to Amsterdam a few times. But I understand it's a dynamic, it's a seaport, one of the world's biggest seaport. Let's welcome Tineke Renson. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, Tineke. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so PowerfulBusinessAcademy.com, MaximumBusinessGrowthForWomen.com, PowerfulBusinessWomen'sClub.com, and you have a book. Why don't you hold that I, up? I do have a book. Okay, there. and that says Maximum Business Growth for Women, and download free stuff. You know, this sounds like you really got it together. <laughs> it's really Thank strong. You, Ed. Why don't you do a little bit better introduction of yourself than I just did? Okay. Well, yes, I am from the Netherlands. And there's always this little, you know, thing between Amsterdam and Rotterdam. You may have heard about it. It's Feyenoord and Ajax, our football soccer teams. Uh, which I'm not really into it, but I am into sports a lot. I am a long distance swimmer. I train three times a week. Wow. Um, I have an intention to uh, swim across the canal in, uh, from France to uh, the UK in two years time. So that's just one of my goals. That's, that's a I want to introduce goal. you to another customer of ah. mine, Andy Elliman, and he's a guy uh in in the uk and uh he attempted to swim the english channel yeah uh, and and got um got out a few miles and then stopped oh, uh, no. but but he prepared himself for more than a year uh -huh. and he had to learn how to swim yeah. first now wow. this is a crazy guy okay he's climbed mount everest twice all right and did, and did he reach the summit yes okay okay so anyway he has these ideas of uh attaching himself to a charity and then getting support and then forcing himself to learn this an immense task at mm. maximum risk and try to beat the odds good so I think uh, I'm, with, I'm going to organize a TV show bringing you guys together. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. I, I he think attempted, that would be a winner. He attempted to swim across the channel. I have not yet. I'm, I'm first, I have a sub goal, which is uh, it's, a, it's the largest lake in my country, which is 22 kilometers. It's quite a distance. The English Channel is 33 kilometers. But, you know, I, I gather if you can swim 22, then you can also swim 33. Well, Even there's a, lo a lot of things I... that went on. And uh, I'll send you the TV recording, the show that we recorded. Ah, beautiful. Where he yeah. talks about the challenge. Yeah. Um, so, and, and so, some yeah. other stuff, uh, some other stuff about me, because, you know, I, I am very much into sports. I studied sports. Uh I am also very much into supporting business women, uh, helping business women. Uh, I've been in business myself for more than 30 years, started when I was 25. So you can start calculating a little bit. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, the past 10 years, I started helping business women to scale and grow and, and it, their business. And it's just recently that, that I discovered that there's something ahead of that and that's leadership 
um, which which is a new era I'm uh, I'm entering. But hey, I've been a, a leader all my life. Um, I've I've had my own businesses all my life. I'm I'm a chair of a national organization. Uh, I'm I'm leading this organization. So leadership is basically who I am, what I do. All right, I got to ask you. What's the difference, in your view, between leadership and managing? Right. Well, there, there's, it, there can be an overlap, but there is a difference. Managing is um, making sure that, that you uh, serve the company's needs, which is the goals, which is uh, the stats, having the right people at the right uh, spot, um, checking the data, having the conversations with your teams, uh, just making sure that the business's needs are met. But a leader is someone who, can, who has a vision and who people want to follow. So a manager is someone who's organizing. A leader is someone. Uh, a leader can inspire, a leader can motivate, a leader can uh, give examples, a leader is an example to the people who do want to follow. Uh, a leader can be vulnerable, a leader can be inspirational. Um, so there's a whole lot of difference. Now, ideally, a manager is a leader and a leader is a manager. That's, that's the ideal situation. It's not always the case. Many managers are not inspirational people. Uh, there are no personal leaders. There's a big difference. Uh, a personal leader is someone who has his own space taken care of. His own life is functioning. There, there's no things that are off. So gets out of bed in time, has exercise, eats healthy, has healthy relationships, loves people, um, you know, all these kind of things. That, that's personal leadership. And if you manage to do that well, then you automatically become an example to other people. Well, this is really cool. We're going to get back to this. Um, some people, particularly ladies, but not always just women, they, they have this thing in their head called imposter syndrome. In yeah. other words, they don't think they're worthy or something or other. You have obviously uh, seen that in others. Would you like to describe what this is and how to get get rid of it? Well, let me tell you a secret, Ed. I used to have the same issue. You mean you um, thought that you you dream about doing what you're doing now, but at an earlier time in life when you didn't do it as much or as well. And you said, oh, I can't do it or I'm, I don't know what to do or I'm not sure or, or something like that, right? Well, you know, I always told myself these things. Well, no, I always believed those things, but I never acted upon them. So I always pretended that yeah, I could why? do everything. Why? Because no, you, it's, you it's... thought you were busy doing other things? I did say those things, so I did sometimes prioritize the wrong decisions, uh, but I have achieved most of the things I wanted to achieve, achieve. Mm -hmm. yet it's, I, I would say uh, I, I adopted the masculine style of fake it until you make it. Just do <laughs> That's it, what I do. Ignore, <laughs> yeah, just, just ignore all the beliefs, all the things that are not supporting. Um, and it, it is possible just for women, that is not a safe environment. For women, um, the imposter syndrome is, is also about what if someone finds out that I'm a fraud? Well, I ha I've carried that with me for a long time. What if people find out that when I'm speaking on stage, I have no clue what I'm talking about? Or what if people find out I'm not that good? It, None of it is true, uh, you know, I've proved otherwise over the years, you know, that's the beauty about getting older. At some point you have to like say, but it's not true. It never happened. All the things that you're afraid of, they, they don't exist. It's not true, but it's how much attention you give to it, how much you suffer here in your mind. And so it's, it's a, not risk. a nice place to be. So I know some ladies who 
uh, a, a strong people and successful in some lines of work. And uh, yet, I'll just, I'm not going to mention names or anything, but um, I know this lady that fears, right fears about being called stupid or making a fool of her, you know, herself. And so she withholds. Yeah. And, and that, and doesn't try or tries to just avoid go around something rather than go right into it, yeah. which I think is exact, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. It, it is the attitude I've had all my life. Um, like, but like I said, it, it was never easy uh, because I was my worst enemy. But I did the things anyway, you know, ignore the fear and do it anyway. That's always right. been my motto. And it really has helped and served me a lot. I would have been a lot happier had I not have all these stupid beliefs. Yeah. And it would have been easier. Yeah. So being an entrepreneur is the surest way to get rich but it's also the surest and fastest way to crash your credit rating yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, peaks and valleys, peaks yeah, and valleys. Yeah. So um, happen to be on an accelerator. I see you're a business accelerator. <laughs> so I'm in an acceleration with this global TV talk show. Um, Beauty. Beautiful. But uh, that's as a result of the pandemic crashing, wiping out my live conference business that I had for 25 years. Oh, and I, now I, I mean, I, March, on or about March 1st, 2020. So, uh, and we had produced uh, over 300 live events. Mm. Okay, so someday I'll do one again. <laughs> but right now I'm a little gun shy. <laughs> and so I'm sticking to this, Zoom, and trying to get really good at it. So thank you for playing with me here. So let's talk about inspiring women um, who maybe have an imposter syndrome or maybe have some other difficulties. Priorities, family, parents, or other activities. I mean, life gets in the way. So um, how would you counsel? Uh, oh, you know, our audience, let me tell you that more than half of our audience for this show, uh, not just today, but in the months and years going forward, because of the redistribution and marketing that we do, more than half will be female. And almost all of that will be in business. Mm -hmm. So tell the audience, how do you keep busy with all the family issues or marital mm -hmm. differences and tenseness, or you got a lousy boss and you're not sure what to do? <laughs> well, I, I teach women uh, to look very closely at the things that they're missing, what men do. Don't copy it because we are no men, but focus is something most women are not naturally born with. And focus is important for, for women. Um, we hear everything. We see everything. We feel everything and everything is important. It's very difficult for us to prioritize because of that. It's it all has a high intention. So it's very important to have goals uh, to know where you want to go in next week, next month, next year, three years. Five years is not possible anymore, I think, because the world changes too fast. But three years is still, you know, doable. We don't know what technologies we will, we will be having in three years' time because that can be, you know, totally different. But still, we can adapt. So when, when you have goals, and I know from research, personal research, that, that over 60% of the women do not have long-term goals, then focus becomes more difficult. So when you have a goal and you know what your direction is, you can somehow sense, hey, does this match my goals? Does this bring me closer? Or does this bring me further away? Or is this just a little detour, which eventually will bring me back on track again but 
I need that experience or I needed to meet this person to help me further. Another thing which is very important for women is to trust their intuition. And that's been extremely difficult for me. Um, What's I intuition? Kind of, it's a gut feeling? Yeah, gut feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's often how, uh, how men call it. But I think it's, it's a similar uh, sense, uh, the sixth sense. Um, we, we sometimes know, uh, or, or any, anybody can know, but there is no evidence listen to this it's highly important but our western culture and our western brains are programmed that we need to have evidence and that our mind is the boss our mind knows our mind sees it doesn't see anything but our intuition knows sometimes a lot better than the mind because it's not rational it's not logical we don't always need the rational and logical so it's, it's important to have goals so you can focus and then also trust your intuition. And a third thing that I would add is always do what you love. So if there are things that you, uh, if you have a very small business yeah, and, and I work with women a lot, they tend to think they have to do everything together, but then you're suffering. It's not, you, you know, you're, you're just in a job basically. Um, and then, yeah, we can say, okay, but if you if you run a business, you also have to do the things you don't like. I disagree. You have to be smart, uh, delegate, outsource. You can nowadays outsource for five dollars an hour, so the money can never be an issue. Uh, you know, because we have the whole world where people on other parts of the world are happy when you pay them five dollars an hour. And, and they can, I mean, I, my, my team, they can support their families because in their countries, they even survived COVID when the whole family lost a job and my assistant didn't. So, um, but, but it, it requires a way of thinking and acting that most women are not uh, capable of. They have to learn this. They're, they are capable. It's not the right word, but they have to learn. It's not about micromanaging. It's not about doing everything yourself. It's about doing the things you love and doing the things that you're good at. So some some people uh, are afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Typical, so what, what, typical women think. So that means that um, they don't want to be vulnerable or they don't want to appear to need help. I think, I think that's it, yeah. And we also have this strange thought that when you ask someone, they owe us, or no, it's the other way around. That, they, they can return the favor. And, you know, since we never know what's gonna happen, we rather not ask. We, we don't want to have all these favors from other people coming towards us. I think that's also part of it. But Difficult, women, isn't it? I always teach my clients and I say, okay, if five people come up to you and ask you if you want to help them and you can, would you? And they say, yes. I said, huh, interesting. So why can you not go to someone and ask for help? Because women are also afraid that people would say no. Uh, are, are they um, labeled as needy? That's, yeah. May, no, 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 not needy. But are you not capable of doing it yourself? Mm -hmm. That's what they would say to themselves. We have to be able to do everything. We have to be the queens of our business, our marriage, our, our, the parenthood, the friendships. It's not possible. Uh, cook? cleaner <laughs> yeah definitely yeah nurse yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. impossible to be good at all these tasks okay so i i want to go full circle now for a second uh, to make sure the audience is with us before we step out uh, and do a spacewalk <laughs> with no no floor underneath us okay uh so uh, once again, the difference between leading and managing. How about yourself? Uh, but never mind others. I mean, so there's two things here we're talking about: leadership and managing. You know, 
people don't want to be managed. They want to be led or coached, right? Yeah. And, um, oh, okay, so. Well, some people like to be told what to do because, uh -huh. you know, okay. they just have a job and it's easy. Yeah, and that's what they want. They're giving you, yeah. I'm giving you my time and and whatever I have, uh, and I and I need that money. I got bills to pay. Yeah, and that's okay. and that's okay. and that's it. No, I don't want not my life. That's, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, good. So the difference between and your attitude now, um, if you could just state clearly, um, number one, number two, number three, the difference between leading a team and managing a team. Leader, a leader is an example, has his shit in order. <laughs> yeah, is, is a person and we're not. Everybody can make mistakes, own them, apologize, continue. A manager is the spreadsheet person and, you know, really cares about their managers as well. A leader cares about the well-being of the team. So the leader is a coach. Can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, a preacher. And not every coach and, and, is a leader. Inspir eh? Right, an inspirational uh, uh, object. Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that I noticed from your LinkedIn page and reading about you and prepping for this over the past month or so is that you are you're an entrepreneur and when it comes to money let's talk about she credit. Uh-huh. What is that? She credit is a Dutch organization. It's a credit union which is um it's a charity where people can become a member and members will fund other members so for example when a woman uh, needs growth capital uh, it's very likely that an investor or a bank will not grant it to her because that's unfortunately the way uh, things go with women in business not always but it's been researched thoroughly that women have less access to capital and uh, she credit now is one of the uh, pillars in our country where people can, where women can go to if they own at least 50% of the business. And then we have a whole system in place, just what a bank does, assess their plans, assess their credit position, assess their assets. And um, when we think this is all okay, we will go to our members and say, hey, you can invest. You can make more money than you can make when it's on the bank because they don't pay interest at the moment in our country. Um, I think they do pay interest uh, in the U.S. Eh? No, That's why investors one, are leaving Europe. Yeah, <laughs> one or two percent, you know. Yeah, but, well, but we, that's we're increasing. still zero. Yeah, zero. That's increasing yeah. because the Federal Reserve has jumped up interest rates. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, you, you know, a long time ago. Uh, in a similar environment, actually much worse. Uh, interest rates were so high, people took money out of the stock market and just put it into certificates of deposit. Yeah. And they, they, they look for 10 years, they locked in at 10 or 11%. Man, wow. that, they pay for college. Yeah, I remember you know? those times. But then the mortgage on the houses were also that high. Yeah? Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I was a child. I remember it from my parents. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but so so she credit is an organization where investors can become members they have to be members and they are entrepreneurs or ex-entrepreneurs who love to support women okay so how do they pay it back uh just like a normal loan um so we 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 uh the investors pay she credit and she credit pays the 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 woman so we are the intermediates we bring them together, but they do, they, the investor doesn't pay directly to the, um, the businesswoman. And the businesswoman, she has to pay interest and she has to refund the money every month a, a little bit. And it's a five-year loan. So that is great. Uh, and I, know. Uh, yeah. I, I, th I think that's great. So are, are you the originator? Um, 
no, I'm not the originator. It's the She Credit started just a week before COVID hit our country. And then they had big problems. There were no women uh, looking for funding. There were no investors. They could not raise uh, growth capital for themselves uh, because they, they needed sponsor money. Um, so they, they, they wanted to quit last year, uh, November. So it's nearly a year. And then um, in January this year, uh, some people reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, you know, I think it's very important and I su really support it, but I have no time. And then the, the Ukraine war started and some things uh, like COVID and like all the other crises uh, turned against my business. And I said, you know what? I think I, they came back a month later and, and this is, I like to follow the flow. I like, you know, when when they came back to me just in the same week, two days early, I thought, you know, I should have said yes. I have plenty of time now. And then they came back. So then I knew this is meant to be. That's that's how I'm wired. So I said yes. And within no time, I've built the whole organization. It's all volunteers. Um but it do, it, yeah, I do spend about two days a week. I'm a volunteer myself as well. There is somewhere a no cure, no pay bonus. But uh, if if I have uh, found enough funding for the for the organization, but at the moment we're the only one in the world uh, at. So I'm I'm keen on exporting this to other countries at some point. Well, yeah. I know some people who might be interested um, to to find out more, and so I'm happy to make unions, a connection. Yeah, credit unions originally uh, started in the U.S. and it's huge in the U.S. It's huge. Yeah. So, audience, this is Tineke. Uh, and now, did I say that right again? Tineke. Tineke. You got it. Renzo. You know, Tina. Tina is maybe yeah. easier. For yeah. You. Right. Tineke. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Here's something, audience, I'm reading this. Are you an experienced, meaning plus five years, service-oriented, self-employed woman who wants to double your business in a year? Sounds good. And transform to be a bigger business owner. She says that she can help you with her 32 years of experience. Take yes. a little time here and, and go deeper with that, because we have to bring this to a close, and this might be a good thing to end it with. Tineke. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for reading that out loud, uh, Ed. Yeah, so explain in a little bit detail. It, it, basically, it's what I already said, you know, women who are self-employed can make the biggest change in business, uh, because if they start, so many women say, yeah, but you know, I don't want to have a big business. I think secretly they do, because they all want to make a huge impact. They want to change industries. All women I meet, I met, meet and met they see things they want to change. They see things that are not going right in their industry, which are usually led by men, which is fine. But I think we need more bigger businesses led by women to, to balance that off a little bit. So if you really have these things in your mind and you want to make an impact, you cannot do that on your, in your self-employed business. It's not possible. So you need to start becoming serious about your business and build a business with a team, with automation, going international, finding business partners, maybe, uh, you know, finding capital, um, creating a franchise, whatever there's needed to make the impact that you want. And it's stepping out of your own shadows, basically. That's On it. your LinkedIn page, uh... I'm going to read this. How to eliminate procrastination forever? Yeah. Well, you know, I've 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 been uh, ignoring it all my life, and eventually, therefore, it's been eliminated. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. So it's and, you know, whatever you give attention, that yeah. is the most. So if you start to entertain your your false beliefs and your false perceptions about yourself, it's going to hinder you. But they're never true. 
founder of Professional Women's Business Club. It's really uh, been delightful to <laughs> have you on our show. Um, so audience, you can see down here in the bottom left, uh, I'm looking at my bottom left, the spelling of her name. And so if you want to go to her uh, site, it's tinikarensen.nl. Yeah, that's my Dutch website, but you will get, it's forwarded to powerfulbusinessacademy.com. Yeah. So if, it, no matter which one, it, it will, it will come to the right place. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for being my special guest. I want you to come back every month and do this. And we'll talk yes, more about that to. in just a few minutes. Uh, and this is Ed in San Diego, California, signing off. Uh, this is a global TV talk show. And this is Tinka in Rotterdam area. Thank you very much. Thank you to host. Uh